All right. So recording now. Okay. On behalf of Library Director Tom Alberts, Board of Trustees President Dr. Lauren Wells, good evening and welcome to tonight's talk, The Effects of the Pandemic, Newark Artists Speak. My name is Dale Colston and I'm the Principal Librarian at the James Brown African American Room at the Newark Public Library in Newark, New Jersey. Tonight, I'm joined by a few colleagues. One colleague of mine, Reggie Blanding, is also a librarian at the James Brown African American Room. The space was named in honor of the late James Library Brown, a librarian, poet, activist, and influencer who was instrumental in making sure that the library seek and maintain books and resources and present programs examining the African American experience. I would like to acknowledge the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Lenny Lenape First Nations on which we are learning, working, and organizing today. We acknowledge that nation and their ancestors. We also acknowledge the devastation and the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade. Before I introduce our host for the evening, may I kindly remind you, if you have not already done so, to please fill out your census form. Newark residents are understandably preoccupied, but response is far less than what is needed. We need to be counted and representation matters. Emergencies like COVID-19 pandemic are precisely why government needs accurate census data. Public health experts, government officials, and first responders all rely on population data to make critical decisions in crises like the one we are currently experiencing. This also affects school lunches, plans for highways, support for firefighters and families in need. Census results affect our community every day. So please visit my2020census.gov to fill out the census online. Again, representation matters. So tonight we'll hear from members from our artist community. We will hear about your challenges, successes, and plans for the future. future. Please accept our heartfelt condolences if you have experienced loss during this season. Our host for this evening is Gary Campbell. Gary Campbell is a videographer, photographer, digital curator, ghost writer, and TV cameraman at Channel 78. He is also the creator of the YouTube series, The Artist Recreates the World. He has interviewed over 400 artists and the purpose of in, about the purpose and intentions of artists in today's culture. As a staunch supporter of artists, Gary documents, informs, and expands opportunities for artists. Please join me in welcoming Gary Campbell. Thank you. Wow. Peace. Um, first, I want to thank um, the Newark Public Library for this opportunity, uh, Dale and her colleagues. Um, You're welcome. Um, and this new adjustment and this um, kind of virtual reality and for us to really get out here and talk to people and let the artists speak because it's artists, what they have to say to me is so, so very really important. So um, tonight I have Marco Hall. Is, is Marco going to come up when he talks? Marco, can you just show your face and speak? He can unmute himself, I believe. <coughs> nope, here we go. I'm on mute now. He is. Okay. There we go. Hello. Marco Hello. is a designer, um, underestimated in, in, in my eyes, but he is really at the top of the line in this area. If you don't know about him, you need to find out about him. He's been in Newark for quite a while, so he's going to chime in. I also have Daniel Scott. Um, Daniel is a tremendous artist. Uh, Daniel, would you be a multimedia artist? Yes, I would be. Yes, um, beautiful soul. Um, just, you have to experience a follow up work. And I have um, Tiffany Salas, um, who I've also um, interviewed, who was a um, PR person and um, stylist, designer. Um, and again, such a tremendous uh, soul. These, these artists that I've known and interviewed, they give so much and people don't know about the work that they do, um, but they've been doing it for a while and they love their craft and they love their people. 
So um, those are those are my three. Do we have any other artists, uh, Dale? Um, I see Brian Smalls on there. We might have some other people who've joined. You may recognize. Okay. So you want me to start? I'll start with my question. Sure, sure. My first question, and for my artists, you can chime in the way you want to, whoever is feeling the question. Um, where is the crea creativity in uh, COVID-19 for you? Where do you find the creativity? And we can lay that on Marco since he's the, he's the elder statesman. He can answer that. <laughs> he can knock it out of the um, Well, now it's coming from within. Um, you know, we can't go outside. So now it's about searching your soul, search within, um, deep, digging deep into my own aesthetic of where I want to be, where I want to see myself in this new world order, I guess we're going to call it. Um, but it's definitely now has come for myself. And, you know, watching TV now, I've watched so much TV, I never thought I'd watch this much TV in my life, but I've watched so much TV. And it's more old movies and new movies and get inspiration from that, but definitely just digging deep into myself and my roots of what brought me to be an artist and a designer. So, and that's what I'm digging into right now to find the art, the creativity, is to digging into my own soul. Danielle? Thank you, Marco. Danielle? He's on mute too. No, there she is. Okay. Um, during this time home, I think um, it's kind of weird because I'm actually home creating within my house. Um, I like being in residency programs and being with uh, other artists and studio environments. So um, I'm coming from being at, you know, Mana Contemporary where I was around a lot of artists and we were able to piggyback and feed off of each other. Uh, we kind of really enjoy um, that process of being in that environment. So being isolated and away from other artists is starting to get to me, especially as, you know, I came out of having a solo show where there were so many artists around and now it's like, oh, well, where are they? So we are basically communicating through <coughs> Instagram or Facebook. Um, but I mean, my inspiration is coming from uh, people of my past. Um, I'm working on a new series right now and part of that series is up at um, Express Newark. Um, it's an ironing board series, which is dedicated mm -hmm. to uh, women who have passed in my life. So there is a piece up in Paul Robinson uh, at Express, but they're closed. Yeah. Um, the show is why we do what we do. And that show is dedicated to the legendary Glass <coughs> Power. Um, so that one ironing board started a series dedicated to other women who were influ inf influential in my life. One being Miss Grower. So now I'm working on one based on my grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then there's another one, another grandmother. So all of them are just coming about. And then I have others that are just like, I have about now six vintage ironing boards. So it's all about the women in my past and what they've done for me. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Tiffany? Um. First of all, I've seen Danielle's work at Express Newark. Um, I just want to say it's gorgeous. Uh, and I want to big up Marco Paul for being uh, the legend that he is here in Newark. Um, I completely missed the question because I had to readjust things. So can you repeat that, Gary? Oh, the question is, where is the creativity in COVID-19? Um, the creativity is being still. Um, I actually am very busy during my regular life. So I think there is much creativity in me being able to sit with myself and move, to sit with my dog, to sit with my plants. Um, it's necessary for you to be still sometimes. Um, and even though this is a really crazy time that no, none of us have ever really lived through or experienced, um, I still find beauty in just being able to be still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May I ask, what is your, um, and anyone can answer this, what is your favorite part of the creative process? Uh, is that for me? <laughs> That's for you, you, Miss Tiffany, anyone? Yeah. 
Um, I think being able, uh, if I'll just answer that first, I think being able to um, meditate on what it is that you want to create, how you want to speak, how you want to delay your feelings. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you're um, used to having like back-to-back -back exhibitions or fashion shows, sometimes you don't really have that creative sit-down time. Um, you see what you want and you can visualize it and then you create it right away, but you don't actually have that time to marinate in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm enjoying the fact that I'm able to marinate in the creative process as opposed to, okay, I know this is what I want to do. Let me create it and get it done. And then, you know, voila, it's more feeling, it's more emotion. I think it's more depth in the creative process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with Tiffany. Um, because before this whole thing, I was worried about deadlines and work having to be shipped here and work having to go here, taking work down. I, and um, sitting still is, I totally agree with that. Um, just sitting still in my thoughts and being able to write them down and process them and look at my work, uh, collect things that I need to create my work instead of like rushing to get them done. Um, hmm. it, it's, it's been, that part has been wonderful. You know, just not dealing with that hustle and bustle like that, you know, it's kind of like, I call it the artist rat race where you're like all running around and trying to get stuff done. I don't have any of that going on right now. It's like my things are in my home studio. I can work. I don't have to go here or there. Um, and it makes it quite easy. And it's very peaceful to create in, in that manner right now. Um, for me, I'm, I'm like the rest of the girls. They're sitting still into, in the space. Um, understanding what I want to put out in the universe now. Um, just enjoying the new space I'm in visually, trying to figure out where my next step is, rebranding me. Um, so the whole process of rebranding me is what I want to show the world once this is all over. So it's been interesting to figure that all out. So yeah, definitely this space of time of just sitting still and being still in, in the work has been mm -hmm. interesting. Marco, Marco, whose um, artwork is behind your head? <laughs> this is, uh, I ain't gonna say, no, it's Genesis Tremaine. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 definitely a piece of artwork. It's a piece of tapestry she did for me, and I just thought I wanted to display it um, in my home for right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, really if I could just interject with, um, we have a couple people in the uh, group chat, so I got a message um, um, to Dale's question from Terrence Sherrod, mm -hmm. uh, designer, fashion designer, but he uh, also stayed. Friend of mine from Maryland. Okay. Oh, okay. Friend of mine. Okay. <laughs> he says creativity comes from so many different sources. Right now, I'm pulling from history as I always have, but I'm really loving my old music. I'm now adapting to the fashion of music, of history, or um, yeah, fashion, music of history. So, uh, yeah, peace. Thanks for joining us, Terrence, and sharing as well. Excellent point. Um, I have to say, I don't want to go, of course, but I think this time has make, made all of us realize how important artists are because we are revisiting music from our time. We're revisiting um, old TV shows um, where we're connecting to memories in times that we have let go because the, the, light, the pace of our life is so fast. Um, how is your mental state? Let's talk about our mental states. Um, would somebody like to chime in on their mental state like during this uh, two months, almost two months, um, and doing their art and staying in this space? Yes, Marco? Um, my mental state, um, I'm again having a chance to breathe. Um, Mental state, I've dealt with death through this time, um, my mom in the hospital, um, losing friends, um, losing work. I just find that, you know, all this is saying, we prepare yourself for something new. Um, I don't dwell in the, 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 the fact that my mental state is, is where it's supposed to be. I think it's, it's helping me readjust. Um, mentally, I'm just trying to stay focused, trying to realize that, um, there's something beyond this, um, and I need to get to it, and I don't need to dwell in, in the, the pandemic. I want to see, I'm trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that's where my focus is at. So mentally, I'm 
at the end of trying to reach the end of my tunnel. Um, I'm not dwelling in the madness that's going on because there's a lot of madness going around mm -hmm. us and, and I need to see the light and I continue to follow my light and live in my joy instead of living in my sorrow, living in my pain, living in the pain of anyone else because um, every day there's something new going on with this pandemic and every day we have to figure out where we fit in because mm -hmm. I realized doing this and like I said, I had a, my best friend of 30 years passed away from this and I had to realize it was bigger than him. It was bigger than me. And I just realized that I have to continue to live and I can't allow it to take me over because there's so much more to do. Mm -hmm. And and I'm trying to do the more. So in doing the more, I have to keep my mental state alive and happy. Um, sewing is my therapy. Um, it keeps my mental state straight. Like people come to me making masks. We want to make masks. I don't want to make masks. Why? Because masks remind me of this. I want to create what I love. I want to yeah. do what I love because that's where my state of happiness is. When I sew, I'm happy. When I create, I'm happy. Making masks doesn't make me happy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like trying to find a balance in that because I've done some because, you know, it's just a part of this whole thing. You, it's mm -hmm. becoming our new normal to have a mask. Yeah. But, um, and, but I'm trying to do things that I like to do. Um, not what other people want me to do. So my yeah. creativity stays with me and within me. And again, my mental state is that I'm trying to live my best life and remain in my joy. And everyone around me, I want them to remain in their joy. So when you come around me, when we're together, it's about laughter. It's about reminiscing about what we used to do and reminiscing about and think about what we're going to do mm -hmm. as opposed to living in this moment. Um, living beyond the moment is where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I completely agree with Marco. Um, I put out an ad saying that I would make masks. And, you know, I got a lot of orders from some essential workers. But the mask thing, I'm a, I'm a gown creator. I, I like avant-garde, couturier pieces. That's what I really like to create. Um, masks are cool, you know, but it's not like my passion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I agree with Marco. Um, my life used to be getting up at five o'clock in the morning and out of the house at six, dropping my daughter off by seven, and then being at work by eight to teach, and then teaching from eight to four, and then from there dropping off artwork, being out till 12 o'clock at night. Um, my mind is at peace, actually, during this. I know it's, it's a lot going on in the world, but I'm finally sitting still in a home that I just actually entered a year ago. And I can value my home and put that time into my family, into my friends. I'm a mother of three. So being able to actually be with my children daily and not having, my, my son goes to school in, C in uh, Syracuse. And it's like, he's home now. He's present. He's here. I don't have to worry about him. You know, and then my daughter is actually here. My daughter runs track. You know, my daughter being on a track field until 12 o'clock at night, track season's over. You know, like, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually nice not to have to run and be in my car from 6 a.m. to nearly 11 o'clock at night. So mentally, it's like I'm free of all of that where I can take that time to really focus on, you know, my, like I said, my family, um, you know, my students, I can really, I can focus. I know it's virtually, there's a big difference because I'm hands on with my students as an art teacher and as an art therapist. But sometimes when you teach for nearly, I'm going on 20 years of teaching mm -hmm. that, that takes a toll on you mentally. And it's like, I can check in with my kids. I can hear from my kids. I do my zooms with my students, but I'll, I don't have to be bombarded with the hour of traffic just to get to my kids and to sign in and then have administrative staff to treat me the way they treat me and not value you, I'm being valued by my students. And, and that's my purpose in teaching. It's about my kids, my students. I say my kids most of the time. <laughs> Those are my kids. Those 800 kids are my kids. Administrative staff, they can stay with, behind their office doors, but my students are, my kids are my kids. And that's why I go to work for my kids. I don't go to work for administrative staff. So it's my, I'm, I'm clear of all of that stress here, you know, and, and, and that's the one thing I do enjoy 
about it. So, Dale, you can see when I interview these artists, they give me the chills. You could just see there. Just yeah. like, you know, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps. Right mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. Um, I want to yeah. let Mike Stedman in. Um, sure, I see him, sure. But I don't know how to do it. Um, I believe he, I have unmuted him. Mike, are you there? Yeah, how's everybody doing today? Fine, thank you. What's up, Mike? Hey, right. I guess for me, um, you know, for me, my art is a little different. I like building businesses. And uh, it's, a, it's my form of creativity, right? So project, look at it like a project, whether it's a, a business model or a podcast or something. And I know for me, um, I didn't realize it, but I, uh, I get a lot of my energy from being around my kids, you know? So like part of me doing what I do is that social energy. And I didn't, I didn't want to say I took it for granted, but uh, it was really hard adjusting to that at first, right? Because, you know, my whole business model, everything I do is socially driven. So there's a reason I do businesses to support kids. I do business to support the community. And in the absence of that interaction, that like physical interaction in the space, I found my creativity waning a little bit, you know, at least early on, maybe like the first two weeks of the pandemic, as I was kind of like adjusting to like not being in a gym and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, it's a battle every day. I know for me, I have to stay busy. I just, I'm not the type that can sit around and just like binge watch Netflix and <laughs> be happy and eat, right? Like kind of like the flow state, right? You know how like you're working on something, you get lost in your work. Um, so for me, I know that when I sit down and I work on my business and I, and I do stuff, I just feel so much better, you know? But the hard, the social piece is kind of hard and I feel like it's, it's starting to, it's just a challenge being inside all day, every day, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. you have a question? You have one of the questions you can use? You, you know what, I was just going to interject because um, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the chat uh, comments of my colleague Tom uh, mm -hmm. weighed in. Uh, first thing he said, uh, one of the earlier comments was uh, not, uh, definitely for Marco, uh, cute dog, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the dog too. Oh, her name is Sydney. <laughs> okay. Sydney, but <laughs> and then to our current point, um, he did just, he just uh, interjected that it's a return to a time when everyone worked at home, when we had an economy that was primarily agricultural. Um, so just reading the, uh, trying to keep an eye on the chat and just anything anybody else wants to weigh in with, um, I'll, I'll follow along with that and kind of okay. add. Earlier, yeah, yeah. Tiffany, can I tell, earlier, Tiffany mentioned that she placed an ad, um, I think it was in, in, in reference to the mask. How do you all seek opportunities for your creativity? You said, how else do we? How else do you seek opportunities um, for your creativity? I think someone else, like Instagram, and you have uh, friends you with socially, um, but how else do you seek out um, maybe a retail or commercial uh, opportunities? Um, uh, well, right now, um, well, right now, for, I've tried um, doing a live create by online for like an hour, like um, Fashion Fridays at Marco. So I do like a dress within an hour. And lately, everyone I've done kind of been selling. Um, it wasn't for them to sell. It was just for me to be creative and feel like I was a part of this whole internet thing. Um, mm -hmm. But um, they seem to move right after I make them. So that's been um, a source of income, a source of something. Um, but I still, my clients are still calling, um, still wanting stuff. It may not be for right now, but they're still wanting stuff just to support the business. As mm -hmm. um, far as the mask thing go, I, like I said, you know, you kind of thrust into it, whether you want to do it or not. Um, I so many people have asked family members, friends, close friends that I've kind of had, it kind of was forced into it, whether I wanted to or not, you know, you kind of have to be a part of it. So now it's like trying to figure out now I'm just doing it because, and now I think it's just a because thing, and mm -hmm. um, because now it matters or it's a part of us right now. It's a part of the what we're going through right now. So mm -hmm. I guess join them. I, at this point, I'm just joining the crowd. You know, joining the masses. We are making masks, mm -hmm. and I did a lot. For, I did stuff for Lennox Hospital. I did some mm -hmm. masks for NJCR, NJCR up the hill. So you know, I'm doing it for different essential people as well, but I'm also doing it for family and friends. And, Whomever else decide they might want one and want to order one, I'll do it. But it's not a big thing, but it's something to do to keep me 
keep me moving and keep me motivated in this mm-hmm. creative space and trying to do things as far as my work and my craft goes. So yeah, yeah. First job. I'm using um, um, oh, Tiff, go ahead. No, go ahead, Daniel. I'm using Instagram as well, um, as far as reaching out to artists and being creative and sharing my work. Um, I'm doing this thing called Artist Pledge now, um, where other artists are putting up artwork and their artwork is going up for less than $200. Um, And if we sell our work, once we get up to $1,000, we take from that money and buy another piece from a different artist. So an artist friend of mine had started it. I saw her work up. Um, we've been friends for a while, um, actually exchanging art material. And there was a piece that was put up. I was like, oh, I want it. So I bought from her. And then I said, you know what, let me take the artist pledge as well and start putting my work up for, you know, $200 or less. So that's one thing. I'm working with, um, Dr. Ellis from NJCU. Um, she's doing, uh, art through healing for NJ Pat. So that's been amazing. Um, they live stream different poets, artists. Uh, May 24th, uh, Saturday, I'm up. I'm going to be doing one of my uh, collage pieces on the ironing board that I was talking about that's dedicated to my grandmother. So it's NJ Pack is doing art through healing during the COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've chosen some poets, artists, art therapists like myself to participate in that. So it's trying to keep connected that way because I don't think if we don't keep connected and we don't create, like Marco was saying, for th- some reasons, we're gonna like we're gonna feel it as artists we have to create it's not we have to create every day but it's art is healing very healing and uh for some of us who are artists we need that we need that feeling of you know filling a purpose our purpose our purpose as artists and giving back to the community um how does how do you feel how do, do the artists feel about the ability to change the un- unfairness in society with their art going forward. Mm. <laughs> um, I know, Danielle, you already, <laughs> you already been beating them upside yeah. down. But um, I'm interested to know how, um, um, and I know Mike is at a different place, but he still deals with the issue of um, dealing with unfairness and how is that expressed in, in what you do. Um, I know Tiffany deals with it. I'm interested to know how Marco deals with it. You know, he designs, but how does that play in terms of the pol- political realm? Oh, how do you see it? You know, you might not, whoever wants to chime in, they can. Was I clear on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, well, for me, I've never played a political game at all. Um, I've always done what I do. Um, love it. Hate it. I do what I do. Um, I've always wanted to be on my own drum, my own path. If it costs your path, wonderful. If it doesn't, that's great too. That's fine too. Um, um, I, I I don't know how to play the political game because my art, my work is my joy in my life. Like I said before, it's my joy in my life. So no matter what you think of it, how you want to play the game, I, you feel like I need to fit in to be a part of you, a part of a system, or a part of something. That's for y'all. I. I'm in my space. I'm in the space that I belong in. Um, I didn't join this to be politically correct for no, with no one. I didn't join this to be anyone's friend. I didn't do become an artist or, or designed to be anyone's friend to want you to love me, like me. I do this because it was given. The gift was given to me, um, and so however it goes, um, wherever it leads me, it's, it's my journey. So I don't know the, the political thing because you know. I, I watch how artists here are treated though. You know, the artists here are giving a very the, the, the long end of the spoon. We are at the very end of the spoon here. You know, it's like you, like, they don't appreciate the art when the art in Newark is amazing. The artists in Newark sure. are amazing. That's true. And they're, they're not, they're underappreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many galleries here. There's no reason why everyone that's an artist has, should have not had a one man or one woman show yet in Newark. Rather than stay there for a month or two months or a week. Everyone as an artist in should have been expressed and seen in the light they deserve. Um, but I'm sure you know you have to play the game, you have to like this person, they have to like you, they have to do this. And that's kind of that's kind of whack at this point. If your artist if your art is great, express it. Sh- show the art. Why well, have to play your game to be seeing your gallery? Why well, yeah. have to play, do this to be this when 
the work speaks for itself because it's supposed to be about the work. It's not supposed to be about me liking you or you liking yeah. me. It's supposed to be about the work. <laughs> mm. So I've always always done things. It's about my work. It's always been about the work. Um, so playing the political game, that's fine. I can do my own show. I can create it anywhere. I can do it anywhere. So I don't have to play the political game with anyone. Um, I, I have my own fan base. I can invite who I want to come. I can invite powers to be that's bigger than you. So I don't need to, to worry about playing the political game here. That's fine. Y'all have that. That's yours. I'll do me because that's how I started, doing me. So I'll continue to do me. But it's nice to be recognized by your city. It's nice to let the city let you know they love you and appreciate your art without yeah. you having to kiss someone ass to for them to appreciate it. When they see the art is great, they see the work is great. It's a shame when you walk in a space, it's always the same people. Mm -hmm. When there's so many other people that you can reach out to to do the same yes. thing. Yes. Who has better art? Yes. Who has better work? But you yes. see people reach out to the same people because why? They pat you on your back. So they pat you on your back all the time. You always go out to them because you, 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 you're scared of the people who don't pat you on your back because you think they're trying to take something from you. <laughs> I just want the same thing you want. That's all. Absolutely. Respect is respect. It goes hey, up and down the board both ways. Thanks, Marco. That was great. Yeah, Reggie. Thank you. I think this will be for Marco too. I just want to, um, and I see brother uh, Brian Small has his uh, hand raised as well. Um, but I, from uh, Timbo Nelson in the comments, he said, just to backtrack a little bit, many of the artists were saying, I think that might have been Marco, um, they're listening to old music. And I'd just like to know what were some of the specific musical inspirations um, driving you? Oh, for me, for well, right now, musically, I'm I'm in a I'm in a Gregory Porter state of mind. <laughs> Gregory Porter's been my my go to for this whole pandemic. Really, um, I I don't know. I'm in the mood for love, kind of sort of in the sense that right. I'm loving my I'm loving my space. I'm loving my freedom. I'm loving my home. Getting to know my home. I'm loving on my new dog. Um, I'm loving on the people in my life because, like I said, right now we're at a time where we need to love on everyone. Yep. And we need to reach out to everyone we know, let go of the pettiness that we have with each other, just release all that and just love on each other. So Greg Porter has been singing, he's sang, he sang songs of love and, <clears throat> and that has been my, my journey right now, love and, and jazz, it's about jazz, the jazz move and it has so many different levels to it and, yes. um, and my work has levels. So that's where I'm at with the levels. I'm all about the levels and music yeah. and jazz music has so much going on, so many different tones, so many textures. And that's what I'm about. My work is about tone and texture. So that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, let me, uh, I think I can unmute. Uh, I think so. Brian Small has a question and just weigh in. If, uh, let's see, just a minute. Okay. Uh, Brian. So uh, when talking about politics, I'm, I'm an artist and I, I don't, I, when, when thinking about politics, I think it's a delicate walk. I think you do have to know that there is a game, a, a certain level of politics always in play yes. for galleries. Uh, yes. In the art game, so to speak, you have to be aware that there is a certain level of politics that you're involved in. Yes. That, um, you're participating in just in art in general. Um, but if you are the person uh, that is um, given the opportunity, you have a responsibility to leave the door open or take someone along with you. Indeed and provide them with the opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Indeed. Because of that, that same thing, the, the same faces, the same artists, the same connections continue to happen over and over and over again. I can say I've been lucky enough or have been, uh, or I've prepared myself enough or walked into the door enough to know that I need to provide that same opportunity to someone else. Mm -hmm. right. So you have a responsibility. It's not so much as the politics. When you are gifted or granted the chance, the opportunity, you do the same thing for the next person. Indeed. That's how we take, that's how we take the system back. That's how we take the politics out of it, is you take the responsibility of 
giving someone else the opportunity mm -hmm. so that the system can I can I chime in sure is that okay yeah, yeah. thank you Brian for that comment um what I will say is that um I know I, I hear Mr. Marco he doesn't like me to call him Mr. Marco I'm sorry Marco uh <laughs> um saying that you know it's it's you know, you don't need the politics. Um, I feel like politics are um, just a part of bureaucratic calling who you know. Um, and collectively, we all, like the entire panel, we all know a whole bunch of people, a lot of really talented people that are here in this area. Um, I will say that Marco, as far as uh, Mr. Bryant's comment, I will say that Marco um, is a, a fashion legend um, that holds the door open for people like me. Um, mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's he's someone that I've looked up to throughout my entire um, journey as a designer. Um, we have similarities, whereas we don't sew with patterns. And I said, you know, to him uh, the other month before Corona BC, um, I said, you know, I think you're the goop. You know, I think you're the Don Dada. I would really love to shadow you. And he said, oh yeah, whenever you want to come. And I thought, wow, this guy is the Marco Hall. And he said, I could just come to the studio any day and whenever. And I thought, wow, how humble, uh, because he is a legend. And a lot of legends don't know that they're legends until um, later on in life. But it's good to give people their flowers while they're here to smell them. So uh, Marco is definitely one of those people. Um, Danielle is very... Um, popular here in Newark, and she has been uh, someone who has embraced me as well as an artist, as a budding artist, because I was very afraid to show my art. So she's one of the people holding the doors open as well, and her mentors were people like Mrs. Uh, Gladys Barker Grower, and um, they both knew Mr. Jerry Gant, and these are people that I didn't know personally, but I'm learning about, and I'm being inspired by infinitely, and they're holding the door open for that knowledge, you can go and talk to them whenever. They're very humble individuals. So just in response to Brian's comment on overall. Um, can I add something? Sure. I think with what everyone said, it's, it's you know, if you look at this panel, you see everyone's talking. Um, for me, it's about the city of Newark and the love that comes from the city of Newark and the people in the city of Newark. Uh, when you think of Marco, Marco being that legend that invites everyone in and cares and takes them in, it's, I'm a Jersey City girl, but when I came to Newark, you know, like Tiffany said, it was Gladys Barker Grower, it was Beast of Washington, it was Ben Jones, it was Jerry Gant, um, mm -hmm. Linda Street, I've known since I was pregnant with my children. Like, it's these people that just are so warm and so welcoming. That's, that's the city of Newark. You know, it's, it's, it's who is present within that city. Um, it's, it's all of that. Like, you know, to this day, last week I snuck out. I went and rang Miss Washington's door, uh, her bell. She wasn't there. She's almost 70. I don't know why she wasn't there, but she was out <laughs> having bread. She was having bread at another artist's house. And I was just out, I picked up some flowers and I wanted her to understand that she's loved. And this is what she's given me. So I picked up flowers. I noticed, I don't know why, her screen was pulled up on her window. I put the flowers in the window. I kept ringing the bell. She called me back two hours later, and she was like, oh, you were here? And I said, yes. I said, so where were you? So she was out. But it's you give back to those legends who give it to you. You know, these are people who, Marco's legendary. You know, you got you to gotta think that they don't think that way. And I had to learn that with my own mentors, that they don't think that way. You know? You know, Gary and myself, last year, we were in quarantine. We were traveling to Cuba with Ben Jones. Like, we were in Cuba with Ben. And we were there because Ben said, you have to come here. You need to experience this. You need to be with other artists. And as a Cuban artist, going home was like, whoa, that changed my world. And I did it with Ben. He doesn't know. He's a, he, he really doesn't see himself as a famous artist. And he is because he's so yeah. humble. He's yeah. so quiet about everything. So that's Newark. It's, it's that, that energy in Newark. People don't understand it. People are afraid of Newark. Listen, if you're afraid, get out. Because there's right. so much love that Newark has put in me. 
for, since I was 15. I'm 42 years old. So this, 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 that love, you can't, you get it. You get, I'm getting it in Newark. I get it in Jersey City as well, but I'm surrounded by the legends and the artists and the love that come from Newark. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think I've also, also have, um, there's this energy, I'll, I'll build on Danielle, there's this energy that pulls you to Newark in spite of, and um, you want all of the potential to come out of Newark because you know there's more, and it's this big ball of wonderfulness, and you might not see all the manifestation, but I, I believe that's why we work so hard. And in this particular um, time now, it's just, it's just helping us. I believe that we're all gonna be much stronger artists because we're able to be still and actually look inside of ourselves and then come out and, and, and create. Um, and I, I think um, people need to see more and they need to hear this because they might be thinking this inside but they need to hear it so they can go out and project, so they can maintain and, and keep their, their mental state um, where it should be for right now and then come out on the other side more powerful and um, just creating, cre creating um, great works of art that really touch uh, our society in such a special way to create the change that we want to um, really want to make on society in society. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways uh, someone new to the Newark arts community might become involved? Who's that um, for? Everybody? Yeah, yeah anyone. Can I speak on it? Because I would say I'm the newest one um, mm -hmm. out of the bunch uh, of, of panelists here. Um, so even though I'm from here, I grew up here, I've showcased here multiple times. Um, at first, I wasn't very welcomed. Um, just because I didn't know folks, but the scene has changed. Um, whereas you have legends that will see your work and think very highly of it. Um, Miss Linda Street is actually uh, my daily mentor, my elder. Um, I've been able to work with her at the Jerry Gant Estate and really learn about Mr. Jerry. Um, I showcased at North Arts Festival for the first time last year. I was happy to be a part of it at Greater North Conservancy. Mm -hmm. And I brought them a program and they said, well, you know, Jerry should be on display as well since you're showcasing art. And it was called Hybrid. And I said, okay, no problem. Um, let's learn about who Jerry Gant is. And I reached out to Miss Street. I had met her at a function um, a couple years ago. Um, I remember when she used to work with Gerald Holloway at Essex County College. He's also a legend. I did one of those shows when I first began as a designer. And um, she said, yeah, sure, no problem. And she was very open to it. And she let me come in and understand who Mr. Jerry was as an artist. She schooled me. It was like countless hours of uh, Mr. Gant, Dr. Gant, you know? And um, she was very welcoming. So you just have to reach out to them so that they know that you're, um, trying to impact the scene. And I wanted to definitely expound on his legacy wholly during the, the festival and the exhibition. Um, so what I did was I did walking tours every day, all day uh, while the GNC was open. And she was really proud of the work that I had done. And then she invited dignitaries and all these people that knew him. And I said, wow, he really was a legend in his own right and he is to be, his legacy is to be expounded on. And she was just very, very welcoming in that regard. And then she said, well, since you did this, you know, come meet a friend. And then those friends are, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, I want to be your friend too. And, oh, you're lovely. Oh, you're young. Oh, you're progressive. You know, and then it's like, we all connect. And that's exactly what happened. That's actually why I'm up here today. It didn't really take that long to connect. You just have to reach out and get out of the way of your own self. A lot of people are timid and shy. And if you really want to, um, somebody said authentic, authenticity will always reign supreme. Yes, and you have to be authentic with your intentions. 
Um, I knew what I wanted to do going into that festival and it was done. And it was just because of me saying, this is who I am. Um, if you'll accept me, you know, and that's what they did. And it was super easy. Um, and now we're here, so. Thank you. Anybody else? What was the question again? I'm sorry, I missed part of it. Uh, what were some ways that uh, those artists new to the North community might become involved? Um, I, like I said, stand true to yourself, stand true to your art. Um, reaching out. Um, it's important to reach out to people in the know. Um, and exploring, exploring what's out here and, and learning about the, as we say, the legends and the people who are in the know learning about the artists who paved the way and, 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 and respecting that and respecting the art and not saying that I'm here and I'm fresh and I'm new, so it's okay. about me, but mm -hmm. respecting the arts that came before you and understanding yeah. how they got here. So once okay. you figure out their journey or <laughs> figure out a part of their journey, then you figure out where your journey fits in, where you fit in that course and you take your route. Um, I believe like when, you, when you're new, there's a certain, pot, a certain amount of dues you have to pay. Right. You just can't walk in and say, I'm it. You know, some people, it's, every now and then, you, somebody gets through and become the it right off the bat. But there's a journey you have to go through. Mm -hmm. And I think all the new artists have to walk that journey. They have to take that journey, that step, and learn from the past to get to the present. So. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I think my colleague, Greg Guderian, uh, has a question. Greg, are you there? You know, let me. Greg, get hand up. Okay. Okay, and I just want to uh, highlight a comment from the section. I think that was to uh, Tiffany's point and um, also Marco's, but uh, um, Marco's point um, from Allegra Leighton to say an authenticity will always reign supreme. It's a powerful motivator and accelerator. So. Um, that was definitely the key point, that, uh, one of the key points that y'all both made. And you can always watch um, some of my YouTubes where I have um, artists from the last five, four or five years. So that can bring you up to speed. Shameless plug, of course. But um, you can learn a lot. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how about, ooh. How do we, um, does, do, does our art become better? I mean, I, I know I talked about this, but do you, how do you see your future of your art? Like in three months or in six months or, or how, the, how the whole environment, the artistry environment is after the end of this year? Are you um, positive about art or are you negative about art? And I know you spoke about this earlier, Marco that you, you do, you have a positive attitude, but still, we still deal with it in the society. So how do you see the future of art? One lady first. Ladies first, you said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that uh, as far as my art, I'm always really sensitive about showcasing anything no matter what type of art I'm creating. Um, some people know me um, as a branding strategist. Some people know me as a designer. Some people know me as a stylist. And then some people just know me as an artist completely, a polymath. So in any of those realms, I'm really like weary about showcasing it. Um, I don't know if it gets better. I guess that really depends on how we feel about it. Because if we wait for someone else's perception of what you've created from your soul, you will never really know like <laughs> the, the depth of the piece um, because it's, it's someone else's perception. So I think that if you just basically continue to create from your soul and how you feel, um, all is love. And, and if people think it gets better, then that's their notions of your work. But it just has to come from within. Anybody else? Marco, you want to go? Um, far as far as working better, um, 
I think as long as you continue to work on your craft, it gets better. As um, long as you continue on your craft, it always gets better because um, you learn something new every day. But as far as how I feel where it's going to be in the next three months or so, now for me, it's about rebranding. Um, so, mm. like, will there be shows anymore? Like, um, we'll be able to walk to a fashion show now with this social distancing and all that stuff. Oh, um, okay. Now it's about the rebranding and figuring out how to use the social media more, how to do virtual shows like we're doing now in this virtual panel, um, figuring out how to, again, rebrand the business of fashion for me, um, doing more online sales, e-commerce and all that stuff, stuff that I love the personal touch, but right now the way we, the world is set up, um, I don't know if that's going to still be acceptable, the personal touch, but so now it's like, refiguring out how to do my craft, how to showcase it, how to let people see it. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's gonna get better. It's just a matter of how to format it and put it out there to the universe and to the world and people to see it and to understand it. And, you know, so we'll see. I, I agree with Marco. I have that, it's, it's that uh, uncertainty, how things are gonna play out one, this is all over. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Marco probably have fashion shows and things lined up for, you know, you know, you got May, June, July, August, September, all the way through. And that was the same with me. And I don't know, like I had two solo shows coming up, one in Newark and one in Portland. And I'm like, what is going to happen with this? You know, um, same thing, I have work that's supposed to be shipped out to Wisconsin. It can't go out anymore. And those are, you know, those political pieces that are based on what's going on in the world today. Um, and I am a little fearful because these pieces were created for a certain reason um, and a purpose and they can't be shown. Like my solo show can't go, solo shows can't go up. And then the pieces that are supposed to collectively go out to other galleries um for a not a political movement but for a movement based on you know lives being destroyed or people being harmed the people being hurt based on their skin tones those shows are not going up and you know are those voices or of those artists who create in that way still going to be heard so that's that's what i'm going through now and making sure that 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 can happen. You know, even the show based on Miss Grower, like sitting inside Express North, who I haven't seen the show myself. I haven't seen it at all. People have tagged me in it, but I haven't seen the work of, you know, Noelle is in there, um, myself and Miss Grower and other artists, but Express is closed. So who's seeing the work that was the curated by Adrian Wheeler that's based on the legend Gladys Barker Grower and why we do what we do? You know, the show went up in February. When are we going to see it? We can't see it. Hopefully they're virtually going to have us come in to see the work. But it's kind of hard, like, seeing, seeing, you know, I like textures, and I've seen Marco stuff. I want to touch it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to think mm -hmm. that way. Artists, you want to see their work up close, not virtually. So it's, we, we kind of have to get used to it. And, you know, I'm thinking about my own, my own work. You need to be able to see the work up close to under, really understand it. You sure. can't virtually see this work. Mm -hmm. And it's the uncertainty right now is not knowing what's going to happen. So I've worked just piled up sitting <coughs> residencies that I've applied for that got into, I, I was accepted into and mm -hmm. I can't go into the residency because mm -hmm. we don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Reg. Um, so let's see, in the uh, chat section, I got a, a question from Kareem. Um, I think you may... That's Ayana. I think it's a, another artist. Hey, Ayana. Yep. I love Ayana. It's Ayana. Hey, so they, they, they ask it, um, do you think as we continue to, uh, you know, unfortunately lose people to this virus that the artwork will reflect remembering or uh, memorializing um, the deceased, so maybe that's, you know, maybe address that in a broader sense or maybe in your personal work, um, you know, if, if that work might lean towards this moment and memorializing the people lost in this moment. I would say yes. 
I would say yes. I'm actually working on a piece called Faded Pictures right now, and it's attributed to losing um, the eldest member in my family due to COVID um, just a week ago. So um, I would say yes, my artwork will be impacted, my designs, my presentation, everything, for sure. I agree. Um, the piece that I'm creating for NJ Pack with the Healing and Arts, um, the week before we went into isolation or we were all told we couldn't go out, my, my nan passed away. And it's being said now that my nan did die of COVID-19. So my nan had went into the hospital on Thursday and then she passed away on Saturday. And when my nan went in, she went in thinking that it was because of um, the flu. Mm -hmm. And then my nan was requesting a ventilator the next day. And then my nan just said, listen, she wrote it out that she did not want to be revived. She didn't want to go through this process anymore. And that was it. But my godmother had to say, like, she didn't think that that's what my nan passed up. But as the weeks went on and people were just passing as soon as they went into the hospital she was like i really think your grandma had COVID 19 and since my nan was cremated there's really no way to figure it out if she did or if she didn't so the piece that i'm going to be doing on the ironing board is going to be based on my nan i don't know if my nan had it but with the way it was described and the way it happened in the hospital i believe my nan did so my i'm going to be honoring my nan as i've done other women with this ironing with the ironing board series and that's going to be a part of the healing in arts for nj pack so yes mm -hmm. I, I am i am going to continue in that way mm -hmm. um for myself um i'm still in the surreal state of it all like i said i lost a friend of 30 years um one of my closest friends ever um and i'm still not accepting it i guess because i wasn't able to say goodbye um so it hasn't touched me yet to know if I, my work will reflect that or not. Um, I just know I continue to work through, the, through it because work and my, my like I said again, my joy, my, my, my sanity comes from working. Um, so I think in some form or fashion, it is, a, it is I am working through it by just working. Um, so I'm not sure how it will affect my work at all because um, I, I'm just here. I'm present. I'm in the present. I'm in the now. Um, and um, again, for me, this whole epidemic has been surreal. Um, mm -hmm. Watching people pass, leave me, uh, watching people leave others, um, it's so much bigger than everything that I ever thought it would be. Um, so I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know what it will do to my work. Because um, mm -hmm. um, I haven't, I haven't, haven't, it hasn't settled in my soul yet mm -hmm. as far as this epidemic goes um because it's still surreal because it still hasn't there's no ending to it yet so i don't know how to feel about it so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah we're, we're um coming up on seven um and we can we can continue the conversation i hope everyone can still stay yes if you can't we understand but um we're gonna go a little bit longer if that's okay with everyone reggie yes thank you um, yeah, and Beth brought it up, and I thought about it earlier, actually, at the beginning when Danielle mentioned Instagram, but, um, you know, of course, as we support our artists here, um, um, from North Library, anyone who has IG or online presence, um, we can post all this information. I see I, um, Danielle's already responded, but in the comments, if you want to just kind of drop any links that you mm -hmm. have on IG, or even now, um, just speaking. Maybe we can just post a link to that as well mm -hmm. um, following the interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, when Reggie and I were preparing this, we had, um, we went back and forth with some emails. So this great question is not my question. This great question to everyone is actually Reggie's question. Uh, what inspiring message do you have for anyone who, want, who may want to engage in the Newark arts community? inspiring message mm -hmm. I think we talked about it earlier and I, I think we all have different interpretations of it but it's just so important for us to really 
Um, let other people know how important this city is. Daniel talked about it, how important this city is. And this kind of, um, we don't have this kind of cookie cutter art. Um, this city has been through some things. And as a result of it, there are some things that come out of that and that is still being developed. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need to talk about the story. We need to talk about the history of the artists that have touched our lives. And I think they get that, they feel it, but the more we talk about it, the more we do the art, I think that's how we draw people closer um, to us. Mm -hmm. um, that, I, would piggyback, I would piggyback off of uh, Marco by saying you must um, know who came before you. So right now I'm studying designers like Douglas Says and Stephen Burroughs. Um, and DeMarco whenever I possibly can. Um, but just knowing who came before you, who did it, and how you can innovate or tell their stories as well, because a lot of their stories are untold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say the same. And, um, you know, just respect what, respect what your elders did before you, because they were mm -hmm. the ones who paved the way for you to be able to do what you're doing. And it, it's, it's just that, that utmost respect, giving it back, giving it back to those people who put it out there for you. They put that energy out there in the universe for you and for everyone else. You know, you just kind of lean towards it. And, you know, it's, it's so funny, you know, I, with Gary being here, it's like Gary's the first person to interview me and know the history I had with Newark because I never told anyone. You know, I never spoke and said things about Miss Grower or Miss Washington or Ben Jones or, you know, Jerry Gant or, and I, I didn't. I kept it to myself because I valued that. I valued my relationships with Willie Cole and those people. And then finally, I was like, why am I hiding that these people have influenced my life since I was 14 years old? You know, um, and it was very important to talk about that. And I had the opportunity to, to see an artist in Newark actually try to disrespect a legend in Newark. And that's mm -hmm. when I was like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't keep this mouth shut any longer. Mm -hmm. I can't. And it happened in, in, in the Newark Museum in front of a bunch of artists. And when that happened, I was sitting in Ms. Grower, Ms. Grower looked at me and mm -hmm. she was 92 years old and she was like, I'm not gonna say anything. Go ahead, go for it. <laughs> and I got up and I said something. And it's you have to give that respect. That's 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 all artists need to understand. Give that respect and you will earn it. I mean, you'll you'll get the same back in return. You have to be humble. You you mm -hmm. really really do. You can't just come out like, oh, I'm no. You can't do yeah, that. That's true. You know and. I've been in Newark since I was 14 as an artist in, in arts high school. And I sat back for years and I watched it and I was like, wow, like these people just don't respect each other. They really don't. You know, they, it, it's, I don't, I don't understand it. And then finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I have to say something. I might be the young one or whatever, the unseen one, the not known one, you know, but I need to say something. And I, I had to it. Four years ago, I had to speak up. And since then, I've, I haven't shut up because it's important. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, 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 and also, <laughs> also be authentic. Yes, be authentic. it's Stay important. Stay true to your craft. I, I tell artists, I tell young designers and stuff all the time. Do. Stay true to your aesthetic. Yep. Your aesthetic is yours. Don't follow mine. Don't follow anyone's. Do what your heart says. Mm -hmm. And um, again, like you said. Learn the art, like we said, learn the artists here. Learn who the legends here. Learn to respect who came before you. And learn to respect who right beside you. Like, you know, even what's right beside you, learn to respect mm -hmm. them too, because we carry each other. Like you said, if, if I'm in the door, who say I won't pull you in? But yep. five of us can't walk the door at the same time. It's yep. a doorway, five of us can't walk through at the same time. Only one or two. Yep. So let me get in the door, then I can pull you in. But don't try to come, don't try to bombard your way into the door. Right. Push your right. Door you're not welcome yet. Mm -hmm. So right. stay true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good okay. stuff. Dale? Yo, thank you ever so. Gary, you want to close us out? 
And then I'll do a little wrap about the library. I just want to thank everybody for coming on, uh, Mike and all the artists that came on. Reggie, thanks. Danielle, Tiffany, Marco, wonderful. Dale, um, for your energy and your time. And um, we just need to encourage each other and talk to each other. However, that happens, but we have to stay connected. We have to stay unified. We have to stay strong. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, everyone. I think um, Reggie, Gary, and I are, are planning perhaps a, a, a part two or part three of a series. So, so mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll be in touch. Again, if you have not filled out your census form, please do that. It's so important for us to be represented and counted. Please stay safe. Um, if you're around on Thursday, we will have a uh, forum. Um, Dr. Uche Blackstock and Dr. Donald E. Moore will talk about uh, COVID-19 and the effects on the black and brown community. So um, perhaps you'll join us for that. And, and thank you ever so. And, and we appreciate you all so much. And um, I hope your creative process uh, continues throughout this and, and we appreciate you. And thank you from North Public Library. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Peace, peace. Yeah. Be safe. <laughs>